Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. The beginning of the month is always an exciting time around here. It is when I debut and share with you how I made my first set of cards using the newest sheet load of cards printable. Yesterday, I gave a look at the new printable, at my first set, and told you how you can download the PDF for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. If you haven't yet downloaded the printable and you want to craft along with me, check out the debut video linked in that description box below. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I make my first set and give you some tips along the way, including all about the special instruction on this month's printable. Also today, my creative team is gonna be sharing their videos for the month here on YouTube. To see what everyone else has created, which I know you're gonna to wanna to do just to see all of the different interpretations and styles, there is a playlist link in the description box below, and I'll also have it as an end card at the end of this video. Now, if you would rather, I also have a channel link list for everyone if you just wanna go channel by channel. But I will tell you the playlist is so convenient. It's just your one-stop shop for all the videos. So you can just go click on it and then let it play and watch everybody's videos. Now, after you do watch their videos, I hope that you will leave them some love. I know that each of them would appreciate it. Also joining us today is our August 2024 guest artist, Lynn of LV Handcrafted. So make sure to stop by her video, see what she's created, leave her some love, and subscribe if you're not already. As I get into today's process video, I will tell you about the products and tools that I'm using, but if you do want a closer look, make sure to check out yesterday's debut video. As always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started by cutting the two pattern papers per the cutting guide and you will notice this month there is quite a bit of scraps and I give you some ideas how you can use it. The papers I'm using for today's cards are from Minte's Blissful Time Collection. I'm gonna get started by cutting the four rows I need starting at the top, but guys, spoiler alert, this did not go as I wanted it to. Instead of cutting three and three quarters inches tall, I read the five inch and cut pieces five inches tall, and I got to the bottom, I'm like, what's going on here? I realized I cut it wrong. So I rushed off to my local scrapbook store, previously busy scrapping, now scrapbook haven, to see if they happen to have a sheet left over. I had a really nice lady help me look at every paper in the store and unfortunately they did not. And I was in a panic because I'm like, what am I gonna do? I don't have another sheet of this paper. I did all the intros. Um, but on the way home I realized, you know what? Because my pattern paper is non-directional, and these are five inch wide strips, I can still make it work. So I left this in for the sheer fact that we all make happy little accidents like this and there's usually a way to fix them. What I'm gonna do now is take each of the five inch columns and I'm gonna cut two pieces from the top that are three and three quarters inches tall and then two pieces off the bottom that are two and two quarters inches tall. Now this does take up the entire 12 inches, so make sure not to do what I call generous cuts. Cut it right at or a little bit under. Now those two pieces left over at the bottom, I did have to slice those a little bit more at four inches wide. I did the same thing for the next column and don't forget if you don't have to write down any of these instructions or measurements because you can download the free printable in yesterday's video. Even though this page started out with a little hiccup, I did get the eight pieces that I needed. I will be keeping the scraps and showing you later how I decorate the insides of the cards. For the second piece of paper, the wood paneling, I am going to show you how I meant to cut the first one. I figured out which way I wanted the panels to run, and for me that was vertical. So before making that first cut, I rotated my pattern paper 90 degrees, and then I cut my rows at 2 at 3 and 3 quarters, and 2 at 2 and a quarter. And then I just rotated those back and cut them down to the finished size given on the printable. Yeah. 
At this point, I'm not quite done cutting the pattern papers. Per the cutting guide, piece B gets cut in half at an angle. So I'm gonna show you now how I do that. You can definitely change this up or switch it completely for your cards. This first way I'm going, I am putting each point one at the half inch mark to the left of my cut line and one at the half inch mark to the right and just go ahead and make the slice. I don't think you have to be exact with this, just maybe if you have a trimmer like mine, try to find some good spots to line up with. For the second piece, I will show you how to be a little bit more precise if that is your thing. I brought in a pencil and I lined my pattern paper piece B up with the grid line on my trimmer. I made a mark at a half inch from the top and then rotated it around and made the same mark again on the other side. Now all I had to do is it was line up those pencil marks with that cut line on my trimmer and slice it. And you'll see here that this turned out looking pretty much like the first one that I sliced. So decide which way is easiest for you. For me, I decided to just line up with the marks that were already on my trimmer. You'll also notice how I am putting each of the pairs together and offsetting them. So later when I go to put them on my cards, the pattern will flow together nicely. Now it's time to start cutting the cardstock and I brought in two sheets of toffee for CS1 and I'm going to cut it until I get four pieces out of each sheet that are five and a quarter by four. I chose the toffee because I thought it went well with the rustic feel of the flowers and that wood grain. I started by cutting each of my sheets into five and a quarter inch wide strips and then rotating and cutting the two pieces at four inches tall. For CS2, I'm using the same toffee, and for this, I needed one and a half sheets, and I'm gonna cut until I get eight pieces total that are four and a quarter inches wide by three inches. So for the larger sheet, it's easy to just cut it in half at four and a quarter inches wide, and then cut your three inch tall pieces. And for the half sheet, I did the three inch tall cut first, and then slice that piece in half. You can do whichever is easiest for you. And finally, for your eight card bases, you would take four sheets of cardstock, cut it in half, and fold it in half. But I already had some pre-done in my stash, so I got out eight of those. Now all of the pieces are cut so we can start some assembly. For this, I brought in my angle cut pattern paper piece Bs and their mat. I did make sure before I started adhering that I set them out on my desktop like they should sit on the card or on the mat. And then I added adhesive to the back and for the top piece, I put it toward the top of the mat with an eighth of an inch all the way around the outsides. And then for the bottom piece, I did basically the same thing, but this time the eighth of the inch border was around the left, right, and bottom. I continued this same process until all of the angled pieces were on their mats. And while I show you that, I thought it would be a good time to stop by for a special channel member shout out. In the month of July, I had some members reach one year of membership. So I would like to take a minute to say thank you and congratulations to them. Up on screen now are their names. Thanks to each and every one of you for your continued support. If you're not yet a member but want to know more about the perks, you can check out the join button below this video or the link in the description box. Once all of the angled pieces were matted, I brought back in pattern paper piece A's and their corresponding toffee mats. To put these together, I just did it with ATG to keep everything nice and flat, and I tried to center pattern paper piece A on that mat with about an eighth of an inch all the way around. 
I continued once again until all of those pieces had a mat. Now it's time to get those two matted layers put together. For this, I do switch up the patterns so the floral centers are on the wood plank backgrounds and the wood plank centers are on the floral backgrounds. Now if you had pattern papers that were double sided and everything coordinated you could definitely flip them over so you have more of a variety in what your cards look like. For me I just stuck with the fronts so I have two different looks. And once again I did just adhere these together with ATG to keep them nice and thin. Once I had all of the pretty pattern paper layers adhered together, I brought back in my card bases and I added one to the front center of each. I did my best once again to get nice even borders all the way around. And now the cards need a focal point. For this, I brought in the Sending Paper Hugs die and Shadow die from Cat Scrappiness. I'm going to be cutting the words from Mold Wine to go with those dark reds in the floral paper. And for my shadow, so you can see through to the pattern paper, I'm using some lightweight vellum. I did take these dies off screen, die cut them, and I got them put together using some Barely Art liquid glue. And speaking of Barely Art liquid glue, to put the sentiments onto the front, I brought my bottle back in and I tried to keep the adhesive behind where the die cut letters were on the front of the vellum. Now the good thing about this glue is if it does kind of smoosh out just a little bit, it dries completely clear. I put this onto the card front trying to keep the same angle as that little split in between pattern paper pieces B and then I set it to the side to dry. I finished adding the remaining sediments to the card fronts, most of which I did do off camera. And to finish off the card, for the front I brought in some little gold pearls and I added five around the focal point or the sentiment. And then I used some scraps on the inside to add a little extra decoration. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my first set of cards using the August 2024 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit my creative team videos by clicking on the link in the description box or the playlist link card here in just a minute. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.